Guys, today is a sad day. Bismuth is dying and needs your help. I need my window tiling injected into my computer by IV. And even though I have been big on KDE, if the death of Bismuth comes, I don't think I'll be able to use KDE going forward into the future. First, I want to be clear that none of what I'm about to describe is the fault of the developers of KDE. If anything, this situation really doesn't change my recommendation, but I wa really want to do this more so to document my own personal journey and where my own beliefs stand about the current situation of Linux as an insecure hack desktop operating system. I previously made a video about KDE 5.26 and I recently upgraded to Plasma 5.27 and everything was working great if not better. I've seen a lot more stability, a lot of bugs were fixed, Dolphin, and everything is great. Except for one thing, my window tiling. In KDE 5.27, KDE developers introduced a new window tiling API, which is really buried in the way in the UI to be honest. And it appears as the KDE version of Windows 11's uh, Windows Snap Mode. And I'm glad that it's around for the people who want it, especially if you use the mouse to do all of your daily activities. But adding this functionality comes at a cost. The KWIN plugin Bismuth. Similar to GNOME or other tiling window managers, KDE allows its users to write plugins to extend the features of KWIN. And yes, while there are other plugins, Bismuth has always been the most consistently updated and even has enough clout to be packaged in Fedora's mainline repositories. And as a side note, if you do use like window manager plugins or desktop environment plugins, unless you intend to build your own plugins from source after verifying them, you should typically only use plugins which are kept up to date and are available in your distro's package repositories. And if you go to GNOME extensions or discover, you can't just go and download random plugins. This isn't to say that you'll download something malicious, but this is your computer and what goes on your computer and interacts with your underlying system, like say your desktop environment, should be under a lot of scrutiny to make sure you don't break anything, to make sure there's nothing bad in it, to make sure everything works properly. But the main dev of Bismuth has announced that Bismuth is pretty much entering maintenance mode. In order to get window tiling in KDE, KDE's team had to make significant overwrites to the APIs to how windows are controlled. The, the result is Bismuth does not work now. Okay, well, that's not really true because Bismuth sort of works, but it's just not as smooth as it used to be. So for example, windows will still occasionally pop up in the center rather than tiling appropriately, uh, ignoring what your current layout is. There's also a bug where sometimes when you close a window, the space where the window will be will just be there until you open another window, staring into your soul, causing you to reconsider your decisions in life. And of course, you can run just one of the other tiling commands and Bismuth will fix itself. Working on Bismuth has become too difficult to integrate without having to do a full rewrite of the program. And this is understandable because completely writing a new plugin from the ground up is a huge task for anyone to take, especially one that's as widely used as Bismuth. Especially when you consider that there are more changes that might come in future bug fix releases of KDE 5.27 or KDE 6, especially given that all hands are on deck to build KDE 6. Uh, but that's all the f history there is to it, and unfortunately, without a full rewrite or API advancement, Bismuth is unmaintained. But there are other things about KDE which have gotten to me. Now, this is my experience using Fedora 37, and if you've had a different experience, please let me know in the comments down below. Sometimes, Plasma Shell will hang up and all icons on my dock will freeze. The only meaningful way to fix this is to crash Plasma Shell and reopen it. And now, I wouldn't be so annoyed by this if it also didn't break every Electron app that I open. So this also includes Chromium-based browsers, by the way. So if you open a Chromium-based browser on KDE when this happens, there, that browser is very likely going to crash and you have to open them outside of Plasma Shell, like say in KRunner or in your terminal. And even after KDE 5.27, I still cannot log out of my shell. Even though there are people who said that these issues for them have been fixed on 5.27, I am convinced that this is an NVIDIA problem. 
Now, the third thing is, I don't have any scientific tests to prove this, but K-Runner and the application menu feel much slower to open than GNOME's activities. I don't really have a way to prove this. I didn't look too deeply into this. I'm not going to do like a speed test or a frame-by-frame -frame benchmark, but I suspect it's due to the way that Blue indexes every file on my computer, and it's also constantly running in the background, so I really don't know what it is. I'm also torn about like the things that I really love, like the sheer amount of customization and theming in QT, like being able to set your own color theme, being able to customize your windows. Dolphin is also superior to Nautilus's context menu and the ability to set your own terminal. You hear that, Gnome? Can you let me set something else that isn't Gnome terminal or console? <laughs> meaningful tray icon support so i can actually view my mouse battery and just other tray icon programs like steam and obs do not disturb automatically turning on when i record videos seriously this is amazing i don't know why people don't celebrate this more i don't want to get doxxed in reality here i'm in a bind i use an nvidia graphics card and i have zero interest in updating right now our economy is or is going to be in shambles my computer is functioning fine and i'm waiting for 2024 or 2025 when windows 11 is in full swing or because of the way Microsoft is right now, the new Windows 12 is announced and Microsoft is going to force everyone to get an MPU of their computer now before I make a decision. And this relationship severely hampers what I can do on Linux. The future of the Linux desktop is Wayland, but there are very few window managers or desktop environments that are out right now that support it. There's GNOME, which I can use fairly fine. I know it's not for everybody. There's also the Sway window manager, but because of the back end of Sway, WL Roots, WL Roots refuses to support proprietary NVIDIA drivers in any capacity. So this is completely off the table. So that means no Sway, no Hyper WM, or any of those other weird window managers. I'm a man of my word, and I need to be honest. And while I could say I strung people along for views and you got gnomed and I'm going back to gnome, I was totally blindsided by the GitHub thread. And if I can't get my tiling windows, and, and while it might work right now, I feel as though I need to bite the bullet and accept that consequence of this response because it might not work for very long. And I want this whole situation to demonstrate the reality of community-driven development and open source. The Linux desktop arguably has less choice than it really sells. Now hear me out. When I recommend something to you guys, it's something with acceptable defaults. And with the departure of Bismuth, I feel like having my cake and eating it too, and the ability to do so, is getting smaller and smaller every day. If this continues at this rate, I'd sooner or later get an M3 MacBook Pro. <laughs> now hear me out before anyone loses their minds. I feel like the MacBook Pro would actually give me everything I want. Number one, Apple coughs up money to get video codecs from the patent squatting regulation company in Colorado so I can use DaVinci Resolve without any issues, unlike on Linux. I get my tiling windows through a Mac program called Amethyst that gives you t window tiling just like an Xmonad. Apple hardware is the best dollar for value to performance machine on the market. UTM provides the fastest virtual machine even if it is just in time emulation even when compared to Windows VMs running on bare metal. And Apple's macOS is more secure than Linux full stop. Apple as a company and from even though they make a lot of baffling anti-user technical decisions which cause a lot of grief and problems to all of us, uh, their security is still light years above Windows 11 and Linux and god knows I'm not using Windows 11 or 12 because of how invasive Microsoft is towards people's privacy. And if Apple doesn't support their hardware for more than 5 or 6 years just like they do with their phones, which if anything is a reflection of what they're probably going to do with their computers, as a badness reduction measure, Asahi Linux's custom kernel driver will likely be in beta or in a semi-stable state when Apple drops official support around 2028. And I know this might sound unbelievable, but these are one of the actual reasons I consider to use a Mac, and actual valid reasons too, not just I want to be in the Apple ecosystem or I want to use GarageBand. Yes, I actually know someone who actually uses Apple just to use GarageBand, but I'm not about to shell out $2,000 
to buy a computer which has nerfed SSD read speeds, especially when you compare it to the M1 MacBook Air. I have boundaries, and I'm moving back to GNOME. Even if System76 is going to focus on their cosmic desktop environment, and their pop shell extension might get reduced support later, it's better that I actually use GNOME with that extension than use something like Bismuth, which is just unmaintained right now. And I hate making statements like this. This is quite literally the fault of KDE didn't support this one feature that I wanted. And if that one feature was there, I'd probably still be using it, using it. But I accept that I will always hate technology and I will suffer with my decision regardless of the consequences. Because at the end of the day, I hate everything. I hate every piece of technology out there. I hate everything all the same. I hate GNOME. I hate KDE. I hate Windows, Mac, and Linux. The worst part about this whole situation is I recommended Bismuth. And it got axed just like a month later. So I don't think anyone saw this coming. But in all fairness, developers have to eat too. And the lead developer has a life who's getting in the way and can't work on Bismuth. And I hope someone can pick up the work of porting Bismuth to Plasma 5.27 and 6. Because what better way to use my ability as an influencer than to leverage the smart and savvy people in my YouTube and Odyssey comments to get in on the action. There's a link in the description to their GitHub and send over all the help you possibly can. So like this video if you're my old chum i'm not a gnome i'm not a noblin i'm a gnome and you've been gnomed and subscribe to find an apple computer that i'll probably never buy thanks for watching see you all later have a great rest of your week